modern snakes are thought to have evolved from either burrowing or aquatic lizards during the mid-Cretaceous period. However, the relationship between modern snake and more primitive snake ancestors, many of which retained hind limbs, is less clear. While many of these stem snakes are known from Mesozoic fossils, some of them may be descendants of the earliest true snakes rather than more primitive lineages. Dolichosaurs may have occupied a niche similar to the earlier nothosaurs and modern sea snakes, in using their thin heads to feed in crevices and narrow spaces along coral reefs and rocky shores. It was a small marine squamate at about 0.5 to 1 meter in total length. The degree to which the limbs were reduced suggests that the dolichosaurs would have been unable to generate any significant movement on land, and they thus likely spent most of their time underwater. Kaganias was small, agile, and had a long body. Like most of its semi-aquatic kind, it had reduced limbs to aid in its aquatic activities. It lived in what was a fertile, inland swamp-like region of Japan, possibly a large floodplain which was covered with water for most of the year. Kaganias almost certainly moved through the water using a snake-like swimming motion, using its short hind legs to navigate. It probably fed on other small vertebrates or mollusks which have been found in the surrounding area. Tetrapodophus possesses small yet well-developed fore and hind limbs like a lizard and a long body similar to a snake. It was carnivorous like most snakes but it turns out to be a lizard. Other features such as short neural spines suggest that it was adapted to burrowing, lending support to the hypothesis that snakes evolved in terrestrial environments. However, burrowing lifestyle is most likely not an adaptation for a serpentine form of movement. Pacarachis appears to have been an ancient marine snake, the fossils occur in a marine limestone deposit, and the thickened bone of the ribs and vertebrae would have functioned as ballast to decrease the buoyancy of the animal allowing it to dive beneath the ancient Cretaceous seas that it once inhabited. Along with its sister genus Pacarachis, Haseophis does not possess either a sacral rib or vertebrae. Also, like Pacarachis there is no preserved indication of a connection between the vertebral column and the pelvic girdle. The skull is well preserved though slightly compressed. In the type description the cranium is described as showing a mix of basal characters, like those found in pipe snakes. Coniophis was about 7 cm long and had snake-like teeth and body form, with a skull and a largely lizard-like bone structure. It probably ate small vertebrates. A number of other species have been described. The loss of forelimbs and reduction of hind limbs in Coniophis was likely an adaptation for swimming. While living snakes usually employ undulatory movement for moving over land, sinuous movements are also an effective means of moving through water. Eupodophis was a marine snake that lived in the Mediterranean Tethys Ocean. It had a laterally compressed body and short, paddle-like tail. While they are very small in comparison to limbed reptiles, its hind limbs possess much of the same anatomy as modern lizards. This suggests that its bones became reduced in size through a change in the rate of bone growth, not major anatomical changes. The lack of thickening at either end of the limb bones suggests that growth had stopped occurring in the limbs at one point in the animal's lifetime. As their name suggests, blind snakes are relatively blind, as they have very small eyes that are covered by scales, rendering them non-functional. Their ability to see is extremely limited, so they rely heavily on their other senses for survival. The yellow-bellied blind snake is non-venomous and completely harmless to humans. They are not aggressive and will rarely bite, even when handled.
Like many early snakes, Sanaja did not have the wide gape seen in pythons. Therefore, it could not consume prey as large as that which many modern snakes can. The holotype of Sanaja was found in association with sauropod eggs belonging to the Oa species, a species only described by its eggs, and one incompletely preserved sauropod hatchling, likely a titanosaur. The snake was coiled around a crushed egg, which the hatchling may have exited from. The eggs were laid in a nest structure that was not preserved, but was likely covered in loose sediment or vegetation based on the porosity of the eggs. Wanambi was one of the last of the Australian matsoids. It was also one of the larger members of the group and seems to have been an ambush predator that lurked around waterholes to catch drinking animals. The last matsoids went extinct at the same time as many of the other Australian megafauna, and it's not clear exactly what caused them to die out. Humans had arrived in Australia about 20,000 years earlier, and hunting combined with a changing climate may have been too much for them to handle. The name of the genus Yerlunger is derived from traditional name given by the people of Arnhem Land to the Rainbow Serpent. John Scanlon has presented this as evidence of descent from the former, rather than burrowing ancestors that evolved into the elongate and legless snakes. The fossil material described by this species includes a rare example of a complete skull and mandible, often crushed in the fossilization process, that was preserved in the soft limestone of a body of fresh water. Gigantophis was one of the largest snakes to have ever existed. Fossil evidence suggests that it could reach lengths of up to 10 to 12 meters or possibly even longer. It likely inhabited warm, tropical environments during the Eocene, which were characterized by lush forests and abundant prey. Being a giant snake, it was a formidable predator. It is believed to have primarily fed on large vertebrates. Some researchers suggest that it might have also preyed on other reptiles, including crocodiles. With its massive size, it would have been capable of overpowering and subduing large animals. Like most fossil snakes the majority of matsoids are known only from isolated vertebrae, but several have associated or articulated parts of skeletons. There are specific anatomical features that diagnose members of this family, such as the presence of hypopophyses only in anterior trunk, that the middle and posterior trunk vertebrae possess a moderately or well-developed hamal keel, except for a few near the cloacal region, often with short laterally paired projections on the posterior part of the keel. False coral snake is found in the Amazon rainforest and is a moderate-sized snake attaining a size of about 70 centimeters in length. It is reported to be ovoviviparous and feeds on insects and amphibians. It has a cylindrical body of uniform diameter and a very short tail, it is brightly banded in red and black and its reduced eyes lie beneath large head scales. It is considered to be the snake that most resembles the original and ancestral snake condition, such as a lizard-like skull. The discovery of Titanoboa provided important evidence for understanding the Earth's climate during the Paleocene. The snake size suggests that temperatures in the tropics were considerably higher than they are today, allowing cold-blooded animals like snakes to grow to such enormous proportions. It was a non-venomous constrictor, similar to modern-day anacondas and boas. With its massive size and powerful constriction abilities, it could have easily overpowered and subdued large prey, likely feeding on crocodiles and other large vertebrates.
Boa constrictors generally live on their own and do not interact with any other snakes unless they want to mate. They are nocturnal, but they may bask during the day when nighttime temperatures are too low. The boa first strikes at the prey, grabbing it with its teeth, it then proceeds to constrict the prey until death before consuming it whole. Unconsciousness and death likely result from shutting off vital blood flow to the heart and brain, rather than suffocation as was previously believed, constriction can interfere with blood flow and overwhelm the prey's usual blood pressure and circulation. The primarily nocturnal anacondas tend to spend most of their lives in or around water. They have the potential to reach high speeds when swimming. They tend to float beneath the surface of the water with their snouts above the surface. When prey passes by or stops to drink, the anaconda strikes and coils around it with its body. The snake then constricts until it has suffocated the prey. Green anacondas take a high risk by feeding on larger prey, which occasionally lead to serious injuries or even death. However, in addition to using constriction to subdue their prey, anacondas have the ability to drown them by keeping them upside down in the water. Woma python is largely nocturnal. By day this snake shelters in hollow logs or under leaf debris. When traveling across hot sands or other surfaces it lifts its body off the ground and reaches far forward before pushing off the ground again. It catches much of its prey in burrows where there is not enough room to maneuver coils around the prey, instead, the woma pushes a loop of its body against the animal to pin it against the side of the burrow. The name reticulated comes from the snake's striking pattern. Its scales feature a series of intricate diamond-shaped patterns that form a net-like or reticulated appearance, which aids in camouflage in their natural environment. Reticulated pythons are primarily nocturnal and are known to be excellent swimmers and climbers. They are ambush predators, relying on their cryptic coloration to surprise and overpower their prey. Female reticulated pythons are oviparous. After a gestation period, which involves brooding the eggs, the female will lay a clutch of eggs in a suitable location. She will then coil around the eggs to protect and incubate them until they hatch. Ball pythons are typically nocturnal or crepuscular, meaning that they are active during dusk, dawn, and or nighttime. This species is known for its defense strategy that involves coiling into a tight ball when threatened, with its head and neck tucked away in the middle. This defense behavior is typically employed in lieu of biting, which makes this species easy for humans to handle and has contributed to their popularity as a pet. All elephant trunk snake are entirely aquatic, lacking the broad belly scales found in most other snakes and possessing dorsally located eyes. Their most notable feature is their skin and scales. The skin is loose and baggy, giving the impression of being several sizes too large for the snake, and the scales, rather than overlapping, are tiny pyramidal projections that led to their common names. These snakes are ambush predators, lurking at the bottom of rivers, streams, and estuaries, and waiting for fish to approach, which they grip with their coils. The elephant trunk snake is nocturnal. It spends most of its life underwater and rarely goes on land. It can stay underwater for up to 40 minutes. 
The skin is baggy and loose giving the impression that it is too big for the animal. The skin is covered with small rough adjacent scales. Species of Paleophis were specialized aquatic animals, as their fossils occur primarily in marine strata, though at least some estuarine remains have also been found. Different species are thought to have occupied different ecological niches. Studies on its vertebrae show a high degree of vascularization, suggesting that it had a considerably faster metabolism and growth rate than modern snakes. This may suggest that Paleophytes, like other marine reptiles such as Mosasaurs, might have developed towards endothermy. <laughs>